Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brian from WrestleMap.com and you're watching Loudmouth Presents Off the Top Rope. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages and denominations, man alive, professional wrestling is fantastic at the moment. It is such in, in such a healthy state, and there is so much of it going on, uh, and not just from the big league, from WWE or AEW, things like that, from the promotions right around the corner, right around the world. There is professional wrestling wherever you go, and man, I, it, it excites me that professional wrestling is doing as well as it does. The thing is, how do you get that information out there? How do you know what's going on anywhere around the world? You know, there's promotions in South Africa, in Angola, in Germany, in Papua New Guinea, in Indonesia, wherever you go, there's a wrestling promotion that you will find. Now, to help us out here, I've come across a fantastic, a fantastic website, a fantastic social media presence called WrestleMap. And to discuss WrestleMap here, we have got Brian. Brian, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. How about you? Excellent. Thanks for having Excellent. me on. I appreciate it. Well, it's, it's, it's good to have you on because there's just so much information that is happening there that people can get a little jaded with the information that's coming up. How exactly did WrestleMap start? Well, uh, it was around the COVID pandemic. Um, kind of had a lot of time on my hands. I was, you know, couldn't really get out much. Um, and I started to... I started to get into, like, I've always been, had an interest in, like, wrestling around the world that I didn't really know about, mm -hmm. or, or, like, I at least, like, was curious, like, as to what was out there, I guess, and yeah. I would sometimes go track some stuff down and check it out, and then I thought it would be cool, at least just for my sake at first, to have somewhere to keep all this, so... <clears throat> around that time I started to kind of like compile just like a map where I was tracking uh, as many wrestling promotions as I could. Um, and I ended up sharing the map. I, I was I shared it on uh, Reddit on um, uh, what's it called? One of the sub, one of the wrestling subreddits sure. and it, it actually got uh, like a really great response. And I thought, okay, so this is cool. People are interested in it other than just me. So I ended up kind of launching the WrestleMap website from there because I thought that this could be a useful tool for people to check out and to find, you know, wrestling around the world. And I even thought, you know, it could be helpful for wrestlers to find new promotions to check out and wrestle for, maybe even internationally and so it just kind of all went from there. Okay. And it, it's now snowballed into this, um, I don't want to call it a, a mega conglomerate of, of information. Um, but at the end of the day, that's exactly what it is. How many promotions do you currently have, shall we say, quote unquote, registered on the, on the, the WrestleMap portal? Um, I think it's close to 1400. Um, but I, I, I don't think I'm close to done either. Like it's something I've been working on for a few years now, sure. but I still think that there's a lot, there's a lot of wrestling in, you know, like places like the U S and Mexico, just tons of like small indie promotions that I think I'll probably always be working to add. Um, so I, I could see it getting up to maybe, who knows maybe 2000 promotions which sounds crazy but still pretty cool to see absolutely absolutely now, and, and what what about that professional wrestling what about that it excites you um that you tune into you know watch every promotion that you can all around all around the world what what excites you about professional wrestling uh it's just i mean I've been just a big fan since I was a kid, like really since I can remember. I remember being like three years old and watching like Hogan and Andre at WrestleMania. Like my my dad got me into it, but he's not really much of a fan anymore. But it's it definitely stuck with me. 
So, I mean, even, you know, from growing up and, you know, like when the internet kind of started to get big, just spending a, a ton of time on there, just finding as much as I could. And I, I don't know, there's just something about like, I guess, tracking down new stuff. I, I kind of get excited about like being able to find things that I didn't know existed. So it's like always exciting, like getting into um, something new. I think it like kind of um, rein reinvigorates the excitement, you know, when, when you find something new. So it's, yeah, it's just something that's been a lifelong passion and uh, been able to, you know, stay excited by finding some new stuff and, you know, some new stuff that excites me. Sure, sure. No, no, you know, wrestling is subjective. Professional wrestling is subjective. There's always something that you're going to have that, you know, it doesn't really agree with you. And when, when people talk about it, it's like, ah, oh, man, that's, that, that's not really my, that's not really my thing. And I always ask this question because, as I say, wrestling is subjective. It's, it's not always, you're not always going to agree with everything that, that is out there. What's the one pet peeve that you have about professional wrestling? Oh, man. So, I don't know if there's one, like, wrestling per se. I think a lot of it comes kind of from fan reaction, to be honest with you where everyone not everyone there's a, a big portion of people that you know they think they could book it better they they know what real wrestling is and sure, sure. That, that kind of stuff I think that's what bothers me the most I've been trying my best to kind of avoid that on social media because it it can get like I don't know just all the arguments and all of that it's like I just don't understand like I, I, I get being passionate about it, but when it gets to the point where people are, you know, insulting each other and things like that, it's just like, we all like this thing. Why don't we just like, I don't know. It's hard to put it into words, but it's like, just enjoy it, I guess. But, you know, you can criticize it too, but try to not cross that line where it's like so extreme and you know better than everyone else. And, you know, everyone that doesn't agree with you is, you know, uh, expletive or whatever. Yeah, I, you know. I get you. I get you. I get <laughs> yeah. you. Now, you, you mentioned, you mentioned the, the Hogan Andre match from WrestleMania 3. Um, is that the first match where you looked at professional wrestling and, and you know, it, it clicked for you? I think probably it's just the, I would say it's the first really big moment that I remember. Sure. So I was really, I was really young at that point. I think I was maybe three years old. And I, I do remember like my dad ordering the pay-per-view and like, yeah, I mean, I was a huge Hogan fan at that point as a kid, which I think, yeah. you know, most kids in the world were. So it was, yeah, it was, it was huge. Right. So, so, so let's, let's talk about your perspective on professional wrestling. What is your favorite wrestling match? I'll ask everybody. So everybody gets the same question. What is your favorite wrestling match? Favorite match? Match is tough. I um it's I guess this is gonna be a weird answer uh there was a match that I saw for um progress in the UK and this is a few years back it was Walter and Tyler Bate and I thought that they like it was at their um it was at Wembley Hall and I think it was the biggest like progress show that they had done at that point it was before they got into like the deal with like the uh, wwe and all that so it was just like the energy surrounding the event and it was for me when i watched it it was like the first time that i had like really gotten into progress or even like anything in the uk so it was kind of like fresh and like new to me and just like their match that they had like they destroyed each other and like it was just such a great match. I know they like read, they had another rematch at one point and like, I think NXT UK that was yeah. pretty well received. Um, I haven't seen that one, but <clears throat> I don't know, just something about that match always stuck with me where I just thought, you know, just the energy around it and how they were like really on the rise and, you know, two guys that were about to break out and um, 
Yeah, I don't know. That's that's kind of the one that sticks with me right now is when I'm asked, like, what is my favorite match? Right, right. Okay. So then we've got your favorite match. What's your, fav- what, what's your favorite event to watch? Because everybody's got their personal favorite. Um, I love the Royal Rumble. I thought this year's Royal Rumble was pretty good. Everybody, even though people's opinions were divided, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, what, is your, what is your favorite pay-per-view? Now, it doesn't have to be WWE. Uh, it it yeah. can be um, when worlds collide or Forbidden Door or uh, Wrestle Kingdom or whatever it may be. What's your favorite pay- pay-per-view? The one that you look forward to every year. So this will probably give me some flack, I guess. But lately, as a fan, I've been more into AEW. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought Forbidden Door was awesome. So I, that was really cool, seeing like the New Japan guys come over. It'd be awesome to see if they do it again. Sure. Um, I guess, you know, we won't know until we get there. But yeah, um, All Out's been really fun the last couple of years i mean i've always loved the royal rumble royal rumble's like a classic yeah yeah you know so much history of course like it's always fun um yeah i would say those are probably the top ones okay okay now this this has been this has been recorded on the saturday of elimination chamber um yeah. so we've got Ro- we've got roman and sammy what's your prediction I mean, I think it's probably going to be Roman, and then they'll probably do Roman and Cody at WrestleMania is my guess. Okay. Um, that seems the way it's going. But also, I know Sammy's really, uh, you know, he's kind of getting like a lot of steam behind him. So maybe they'll turn it into a triple threat, do something where you know, the finish gets a little disputed, maybe, you know, the Usos help out or, you know, something like that to keep it, keep it rolling. Do you think with it being in Montreal, we're going to see another 1997? <laughs> Screw job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, it, would, it would actually, it would actually make perfect sense to do so. You know that that could be a way to bring Sammy into the main event. Is having right, you know, right, some kind, of, right, something to keep keep the ball rolling with that story. I could see it. Yeah, I could yeah. see it for sure. Um, it, it would definitely get the Montreal fans worked up, though. I think. Yeah, so. not not that not, not that they really <laughs> quiet uh, fans to start with, but you know, <laughs> right. yeah. I just I just you know I. I with all that's gone on with WWE and Montreal and things like that, you really don't want to, you know, create a thing where, you know, you actually burn the, literally burn the city down. But, you know, <laughs> right. Stranger, stranger right. things have happened. Vin, Vince is there somewhere. So, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want to get back to the WrestleMap stuff. Okay. The promotions themselves, um, do they come to you and say hey listen here brian we've got this information we're putting it out there or is it just a matter of you just scouring thousands and thousands and thousands of sites uh looking for stuff from argentina peru bolivia angola you know wherever madagascar wherever these places are yeah it's a little bit of both um when i first started doing it it was pretty much just me tracking stuff down Mm -hmm. Um, I built some context through, you know, writing and sharing about some stuff. So from there, then, um, I do have people now from different promotions around the world that will reach out and be like, Hey, would you maybe consider covering this stuff like that or sharing it on social media or something like that? Um, but yeah, early on it was, uh, Um, Just kind of from like the database that I put together, just going through, trying to find some cool stuff to share. Um, It helps with like social media because I would follow, you know, on on the WrestleMet accounts, I would just follow every promotion I could find. So pretty much the entire feed would just be, you know, wrestling from all over the world. So I could scroll through and pick out some cool stuff. Right, right. With all these promotions and all the information coming through and things like it, what's what, what's the coolest thing you've seen? What, what's the most unique thing that you've seen? 
Um, one thing that stands out is just kind of like settings for shows. So like, like the venue that they'll be running out of, or sometimes when it's not a venue is kind of cool to me. So the one thing that kind of popped into my mind here is uh, in Nepal, there's a promotion called a Nepal Ring Wrestling Association. Mm-hmm. And they've been kind of making an effort to hold like their event they have like a lot of mountains and stuff in nepal so they've been uh like heading out into like the mountain like scenery to hold the shows so the very first time that i saw one of those it was really cool to see because they had you know around the ring there's a mountain but like on the mountainside you have all these fans gathered like they they draw like i think to that show they said it was about five thousand. Wow. and i end up like talking with uh yeah with their secretary that I have a, a good relationship with and she said that the the location that they were at was actually like very rural and there wasn't really like transportation there so like a huge number of the fans had to walk like over a mile on foot to wow. come to the show and then they're all like in the mountainside surrounding the the ring and and just like the scenery around it was awesome so that that's one that really sticks out to me is like one of the coolest most unique things i've seen uh, another is um like catch fetish or like voodoo wrestling in uh the congo is just because it's so different than what you see some of it i is a little bit too much for me like when they'll use like some animal sacrifices sure, and stuff sure. and you know i know it's it's like a cultural thing that i can't fully understand but it's tough for me to watch sometimes when, okay. when that kind of thing is going on. Right, right. Excellent. Well, you know, have, have they invited you out? Have any of these promotions actually invited you out and say, hey, listen, why don't you come and see a live show? They have, like they said, come, you know, come on out. But it's it's tough. Like I live in Buffalo, New York in the United States. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, uh, like I work a full-time job, I like own a house, I'm married. So I don't really have, you know, the, the time or even like the means to just kind of like head out to Nepal for a weekend or, sure. you know, sure. Pakistan or something like that. Like, I'd love to do it. And hopefully one day I can, you know, check out some of these shows live. And I, like, I used to think to myself, like, one goal would be like see a show in every country, but that just seems like I like with my like schedule and all that. It's like I don't know how I could ever make it happen. It, yeah. You know, maybe eventually down the road something could happen where you know I <laughs> had a lot more you know time and money to make it happen. But yeah, yeah maybe maybe just a dream at this point. The 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 power the the powerball pop dream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just just spend just spend your weekends going from Nepal to Bolivia to Peru to you know the Congo. Right, right. 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 Yeah, yeah. With regards to pro wrestling, who was who? Will, uh, let's put it this way: in the history of you watching pro wrestling, what's the two wrestlers that you would have liked to have seen? wrestle love that you never had um ricky steamboat is one mm-hmm. i was always a big fan of him uh, i actually i was uh i was an amateur wrestler growing up until mm-hmm. I, I had a back injury and kind of had to step away my goal was to be like a, a pro wrestler sure. but it didn't end up working out um but a funny story about ricky steamboat is I, I remember I skipped our picture day for our uh, like varsity wrestling, like practice and pictures um, to stay home and watch uh, Ricky Steamboat and Ric Flair match that I just got on a tape. So I was too excited. I couldn't wait. So I <laughs> skipped out on picture day. So oh, okay. I never got a chance to see him live. So Ricky Steamboat would be one. And let's see, who else? Um, maybe like Onita. Oh, I was always like a big uh, FMW fan growing yeah. up. So maybe, 
you know, if I could go back to the nineties, like when they were really at their peak and check out an Onita match at, sure. in Japan, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Awesome. The, 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 shall we say the earlier Japanese stuff, uh, when you had guys like Stan Hansen and Onita and, uh, Jumbo Suit and some of those, some of those things, some of those matches were really brutal, really brutal. And you watch them now oh, in context oh, yeah. and you're like, Oh my goodness. You know? Yeah. Right. And you got to wonder too, like Misawa, like dying in the ring, you know, it's like how much, how much punishment were they really taking at that point? It, like, was it worth it? I mean, the matches were awesome, but yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> and, then, and then you and then you hear some of those some of those shots coming through and you're like Oof. yeah and even as even as a pro myself you're like yeah I, I'm, I'm not getting paid that much it, um, you know <laughs> right. perhaps, perhaps saving that one for for a, you know when you do when you're doing like a wrestle monster where there's going to be like twenty eight thousand or thirty thousand people yes. there, you know you'll save it for one of those not for a you know yeah, right you know you're doing a you're doing a show across from the Kirikunan hall and it only fits 250 people in it like, <laughs> yeah yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the what is the goal for wrestle map for 2023 um i think i have a new a new focus that I would like to kind of focus a little bit more on video content. Mm -hmm. I want to take some of the articles that I've written. Like I did one that was kind of like a big, what I tried to do my best of like a preview of like African pro wrestling in 2023. Sure. And I tried to cover some of the stories and some of the champions there. Um, I'm working on a video now of uh, t kind of taking that, uh, that story and turning it into more like an informative video. So I'd like to do a little bit more of that and maybe spread the reach uh, video wise, because I think that's kind of like a market that has, you know, has some opportunity for, and maybe some desire. I, I do see like, you know, documentary wrestling stuff is always pretty popular. So I think that kind of falls in line with what I create and stuff like that. So I think I'd like to do a lot of that, a lot of videos. Um, I'd like to get a, a couple more events out. I know that I, um, I have one that I'm working on where I'll do like some production, some commentary even. Um, I have at least one of those coming this year, maybe a, a couple other matches along the way too. I, I'd like to get more matches where, um, you know, I can help with my platform, share some stuff from around the world that maybe some people haven't seen. Um, Cause I think that's at this point, some people are coming to WrestleMap for, you know, just to see what, what else is out there internationally that maybe if, you know, they were sharing some stuff through just their promotions, YouTube or stuff like that, that people might not come across. Right. So a lot, a lot of video stuff, I think. Yeah, we we've got a, a especially in South Africa we've got we've got a lot of youngsters that um, are interested in professional wrestling, but you know they they, they don't know that they're, they're looking at WWE and AEW and they don't really you know look at the local promotions and things like that. And they want to do videography and uh, and things like that. Would you be open to um, guys like that anywhere around the world? You know, have them at an event recording the event editing the events and then sending it through to you and saying, Hey, look, this is what I can do. Um, let's put it out there on the WrestleMap platform. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I was, I'm always up to any kind of collaboration and along with collaboration, I don't feel like anything would need to be exclusive to WrestleMap either. So if I have someone that wants to work with me and they, they would say, Hey, can we share this on WrestleMap? But they also have their own platform. I would, you know, I would be all open for, to share it on both places. I mean, the goal is to get as many eyes on international stuff as we can. So, yeah, I would definitely be open to something like that for sure. All right, All right. great, great, Brian. Before we go, and I, I, I tend to test uh, all my guests that, that, that come onto onto the show as well. I'm going to give you a few names. Okay, I'm just going to okay. throw out a few names to you. All I want is one word answers. Okay. Okay. 
just the first thing that comes to your mind um just as soon as i say it just blurt out whatever comes to your mind all right <laughs> all right are you ready yeah hulk hogan unfortunate nwo the best bullet club uh reinvigorating a walter chop <laughs> deadly <laughs> mickey james <laughs> Uh, I'll say legendary. Impact Wrestling. Uh, can I say more than one word? <laughs> <laughs> uh, their heyday is over, unfortunately, I guess. Is, you know, that's kind of... I'm happy they're sticking around, but... You know, they're not really what they used to be, I think. We'll, we'll I mean, they're still putting out a good product, but it's, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about the impact later. Um, Vince McMahon. Oof. I guess genius, even though, you know, everything going on, he's still, he made a lot happen. Chris Jericho. Goat. Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Tenacious. Seth Rollins. I mean, I like him as a heel. I think he's a great heel, a great whiny heel. So. Rhea Ripley. She's a monster. <laughs> and last but not least, Brett the Hitman Hot. Seems to always be right. <laughs> I love it. it. <laughs> Ron, I, I appreciate your time here, man. Um, we're going to be putting up all the social media uh, tags for WrestleMap so that people can go onto uh, WrestleMap. They can go onto awesome. Instagram or TikTok or wherever it may be. Um, like, following, share, and everything like that. Uh, I do appreciate the, the the time that you've given us to um, to get WrestleMap out there. Um, I think it's a great platform. Uh, it's very informative, and if you want to find out about professional wrestling um, from around the world to around the corner, WrestleMap is your place to find it, man. And we're really appreciative of all the work that you're putting into it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thanks a lot for having me on, and I really appreciate it. All right, great. And guys, um, as we say, we're going to be putting up the tags for uh, WrestleMap. Please go and like, follow, share all the social media platforms. Uh, if you're a young videographer and you want to put something together, please hit Brian up uh, on the social medias there and collaborate with him. Uh, and let's grow professional wrestling. Um, for better or worse, for richer or poor, this is the sport that we love. Um, and we're not always going to agree with it, uh, but we're always going to love it. So uh, respect it and it will respect you. And guys, from the Loudmouth and Brian from WrestleMap, Loudmouth presents Off the Top Rope, Uncensored, uncut and go watch live professional wrestling for goodness sake.